out of town. I just arrived uh, about 15, 20 minutes ago and got I ready see. for the <laughs> thing. So I was away uh, uh, for a week. I just came back on you know few moments ago. So I'm glad that I was able to come on time. At six, we'll start. We are troubling you. <laughs> <laughs> I am also from Punjab University. Mm -hmm. I have been student of Professor uh, Kapoor as well as Professor Arkin Singh. I did my master's and PhD and uh, served the alma mater maybe for more than 30 years, 35 years, 33 years, 2 years, something like that. Uh, actually, Professor Kapoor generated many, many students. He actually yes, inspired <laughs> yes. many students. And I think yes. he... I am one uh, of them. <laughs> yes, and he has come to Naipar even few uh, months ago, and he has contributed immensely for even Naipar. And I think I am really grateful to him that his contribution is really, really great towards say, you know, whatever we do here. Yeah. So, whenever we want to start, we are ready to... Uh, at 6 o'clock, exactly. Yes, yes. You have around 6-7 minutes. Yes. So, um, you know, it's great. I, um, I hope this is completely online. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a very good evening, dear participants. On the behalf of uh, on behalf of the School of Pharmacy and Emerging Sciences, Badi University of Emerging Sciences and Technology, I, Bhartendu Sharma, welcome our chief guest, Professor Dr. Dulal Panda. Uh, I feel very honored to introduce Professor D Dulal Panda, sir. Professor Dulal Panda is an Indian cell biologist and the chair professor at the Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering of the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. Presently, he is the director of National Institute of Pharmaceutical Education and Research, SAS Nagar Mohali, known for his studies on microtubule dynamics and FTSZ assembly dynamics. Panda Sir is an elected fellow of the Indian Academy of Sciences and the National Academy of the Sciences India. The Department of Biotechnology of the Government of India awarded him the National Bioscience Award for Career Development, one of the highest Indian science awards for his contributions to biosciences in 2005. Professor Dulal Panda sir did his doctoral studies at Boss Institute to earn a PhD degree in biochemistry in 1994 and subsequently did his postdoctoral work at the University of California, USA during 1998 to 2000 as a research associate. Uh, on his return to India, he joined the Indian Institute of Technology Bombay in 2000 as an assistant professor at the School of Bioscience and Bioengineering and has been serving the Institute since then. During this period, he became an associate professor in 2003 and a professor in 2007 and serves as a chair professor at the School of Bioscience and Bioengineering. In between, he was also associated with the scientific program in the life sciences of the Department of Sciences and Technology during 2003 and 2004. Professor Dulal Panda sir was awarded with academic fellowships as a fellow of the World Academy of Sciences. He was fellow of the Indian National Science Academy, fellow of Indian Academy of Sciences and fellow of National Academy of Sciences India. Sir was awarded with Sun Pharma Research Award, JC Bose National Fellowship, fellowship DST India, Tata Innovation Fellowship, DBT India, GN Ramachandran Gold Medal, CSIR India, DAE, SRC, Outstanding Research Investigator Award, CDRI, Excellence in Drug Research, 
एस सी भट्टाचार्य अवार्ड एक्सीलेंस इन बेसिक साइंसेस आई बॉम्बे नेशनल बायो साइंसेज अवार्ड डीबीटी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया पी एस शर्मा मेमोरियल अवार्ड सोसाइटी ऑफ बायोलॉजिकल केमिस्ट मेंबर ऑफ गुहा रिसर्च कॉन्फ्रेंस Pagetri International Award, National Institute of Health, USA. So I am going to take the opportunity to invite our chief guest to deliver his talk. Sir, welcome in your public talk. Okay. So thank you so much, and uh, I'm really grateful that I have been invited, and. you know i was away and just came back about 15 20 minutes ago uh, from a week long trip to west bengal see um the topic is very very interesting that uh, you know drug development and the area that the university is situated is known for its contribution for drug development now before i actually I'll give a bit of science uh, to be talk on this. I just want to tell you that today it is the need of the hour that our universities and industry work together and look for the development of drugs. Um, you know, a lot of time that we focus on thinking that it must be affordable, but actually. you know if you look at the price of any medicine it is not because the raw material or the ingredients are costly very few cases it the most of the expenditure is coming from one you know phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 clinical trials cost of the lawyers cost of the marketing and then huge profit margin huge profit margin and that's why everything is very very costly now if we develop a compound or a drug and we spend a lot of money on this still it will be actually affordable we just need to look at something is effective and in the uh, himachal the body areas there are a lot of generic companies they are doing excellently uh, well their their contribution is really remarkable but if you think of uh, you know api synthesis today if you want to make api say even paracetamol are we going to be competitive the idea is probably not because a ton of <laughs> paracetamol is so cheap it is very difficult to actually make this so many of the apis are commercially non viable okay but still we probably need to do it because once we learn how to do a we can do b once we learn how to do b we can do uh, you know c so in order to do capacity building we probably should actually get these apis okay now this, this is really critical that in this country become independent on api machine synthesis or key starting material or on the generic drug that we are uh, making but you know generic drug india is uh, generic drug market made india um, Uh, the pharmacy of the world and the lot of contribution of indian generic market to towards the world end i will not say profit or anything when money is uh, when the medicine is involved it's the contribution uh, towards the he- uh, towards health so um, india is making lot huge contribution making others life better however this is not sustainable because very as uh, soon you will see generic market will get down we need to develop biosimilar we uh, need to develop new medication we have to have a cutting edge technology to actually uh, to remain the uh, the tag of pharmacy of the world okay so biosimilars are important biologics are important 
looking at the antibody um, uh, treatment is important. Producing enzyme uh, is important. So it's not no longer the only you know generic will be able to do this. But generic actually gave us the idea that we can do it, and it has done wonderfully. However, this is the right moment when we really need to focus on some novel drug discovery. Some cases, repurposing of the drugs. See, repurposing of the drug has multiple advantages. You can actually reduce the cost of the uh, clinical trials and so on. And um, so that is one thing. Plus, you know, it is very difficult to develop a new drug. This is another thing that I think we are very good in this, but it requires the uh, combination of biologist, pharmacologist, and chemical engineer and chemist is the drug delivery. India has actually very good chemical engineering departments all over the country, and India's chemistry is known for a long, long time. But academically known and really delivering are two different things. So I think the drug delivery is a multidisciplinary subject. In order to deliver a, a compound, a drug, to a particular place requires input from biologist, pharmacologist, immunologist, chemical engineer, as well as chemist. So if we can actually put together teams and they work in a concerted way, I think we will be able to achieve this. So I, uh, this is really critical that we concentrate on delivering particular <coughs> uh, drug and that will reduce the cost or increase the solubility of the drugs by making new formulation, making um, you know uh, the ingredient cheap as much as important. If we can make the drug soluble, then you can actually increase the effectiveness. So anyway, all these things are needed to be done. And in order to do this, we need togetherness. We have to work, uh, you know, academia, industry, um, in collaboration, and so on. So with this, what I will show you, certain thing that I think uh, we uh, must try and, um, and I will show some of the thing that we were trying <coughs> in our uh, own way. So I, I will just show you if my, uh, and maybe a little bit of, um, um, you know, how we can actually find out new drugs and so on. So is my screen visible? Um, please tell me whether the screen is visible. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, the presentation is not visible. Uh, is visible? Not visible or visible? Not visible, sir. Uh, why is the share? You have to allow you to share. Uh, if you allow me to share, then I can only yes, um, uh, share. Okay, sir. Please. Uh, um, uh, in this screen, uh, let me see. Uh, where is the share? Uh, is there anywhere share is coming? Can you tell me from there? Where is the share part? Yes, sir. On your screen, there is a upside arrow. Upside arrow on the? Near to mic. Near to mic, there is share. Open yes. share tray. Yes, uh, yes. yes screen or window screen so you say the screen sir yes screen then and go to your presentation and uh, like a normal presentation it will work now is it working no sir first you not share yes sir yes sir then again yes. there will there will be a dialogue box will be there Okay, share uh, uh, screen. 
say up and uh, and now i will say yes 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 now it's you uh, you now can see visible. right yes sir yes sir okay uh, i see the drug i talk about the drug development strategy first see a few months ago about a year probably close to a year ago uh, we did an exercise uh, to select priority disease groups through gap analysis so uh, it was important to find out where should we prioritize how because you know everything we want to do we can't do this so selecting the priority disease groups through gap analysis if you look at this national burden of diseases in 2019 in, in india these are the top 10 causes of death in india so first is the heart disease ischemic heart disease then uh, you know copd stroke diarrhea tuberculosis also you can read all these the 10 uh, top 10 diseases and then you look uh, so here you, you look tuberculosis and uh, you know uh, uh, but heart disease is still there at the top and uh, copd stroke and so on and diarrhea uh, then there is also in, you will see for man and women there are two different chart um, uh, so, uh, some uh, diseases that uh, they are uh, some diseases kill man more than women and in some cases women Uh, dies more than the man, and but heart disease do not differentiate. But in case of uh, you know uh, diarrhea, diarrhea disease is very high in uh, female, or is male it is uh, in lower side. Uh, tuberculosis, if you look at this uh, in women, it is lower side, but male it is higher side, and um, so uh, so on. so that is not important but you if the one thing is important that 2009 to 2019 many disease many causes of mortality actually ch- um, change their places and i think post covid uh, it will even change more this is in uh, 2020 data i don't have 21 or 22 data but this is the 2020 data it looks like that diseases are changing their uh, places so based on lot of rigorous analysis we thought that we will actually focus on certain diseases and the so top 20 critical diseases causing death in india these are the uh, 20 diseases so we thought that it, and then there are diseases like vector borne diseases um, dengue yellow fever malaria um, and so on and uh, um, and then you have endemic diseases so many in, um, uh, of them uh, um, then gram negative bacteria the disease caused by gram negative bacteria gram positive bacteria now it is e- relatively easy to treat gram positive bacteria but very difficult even uh, now to treat uh, gram negative uh, bacteria and that is causing lot of trouble today um, uh, you know so uh, on these uh, list and the drug development you know it's like thousands of things you are trying to do ultimately you are getting one uh, compound if you are looking at um, the funnel the st- drug discovery you, it takes 3 to 5 years um, then in a phase a different phases ultimately stage 3 you have only five compounds and the regulatory getting in one so t- from 10000 compound effective compound you get one compound that's why it is so costly uh, in many cases and many companies particularly um, the um, you know big multinational may not focus on uh, the dgs in third world countries because from the cost is so high and if the um medicine price is not that high it does not get the um cost recovery they have to make profit so process of drug development is a drug discovery and design pre clinical research clinical research review and release of the drug and post market drug safety monitoring so now in drug design you have drug design or repurposing high throughput screening identification of lead compounds traditional medicine natural products biological macromolecule compound libraries 
computational chemistry and structure activity relationship you know a lot of success have come by high throughput screening or by traditional medicine natural products biological but structure activity relationship there are a lot of work have been done but how much success we have achieved it is really debatable uh, so we needed to know much more about the structure activity relationship you can see if you think of um, the uh, you know the very old ways classical ways of screening uh, the anti cancer drug taxol came that way vinblastin came that way or anti malaria compound came that way all the compounds that or uh, even antibacterial compounds came by and uh, mostly uh, by classical screening methods so pre clinical research identification of the target mechanism of binding mechanism of action determination of minimum inhibitory concentration and pharmacokinetic studies so most of the universities in india are now highly equipped to do this part that identification of the target mechanism of binding mechanism of action determination of minimum um, inhibitory concentration and pharmacokinetics so this is probably the domain of the universities and um, uh, next thing maybe and uh, do some um, work on animal beyond that it is very difficult in university setting to go much there we need industry to really take part or dedicated mechanism to take care of the problems beyond this level so for example uh, you know several years ago i uh, wrote one uh, you know expert opinion on therapeutic target that here fpsg the bacterial cell division protein this is the called the bacterial cell division protein because if you inhibit this uh, protein activity bacteria uh do not divide and and ultimately lies so bacteria rule on us by dividing and if you inhibit fpsg function it uh, bacteria can't divide so fpsg track target identification and validation primary screening heat identification lead identification lead optimization development of ca uh, candidates and pre clinical studies and clinical trials so there are some compounds even came through this level but uh, you know beyond uh, nothing has been successful on this and because there are lot, all the compounds so far have been found out they are uh, you know apparently they are toxic because fpsg has a um, uh, you know homolog in us that is tubulin and in even small animal they may not be toxic but in man it is becoming uh, tubulin targeting so it's very difficult to get um, the toxicity out of this so far there is no drug that is working but this is um, a very important target so if we get a compound which only target fpsg even at higher concentration but does not touch tubulin in animal level could be effective antibacterial compounds i will just talk about a technique some because you know i can simply uh, keep giving speech or i can just show some um science and uh, maybe show people how to use the technique to find out targets and so on so one of the thing that i use i used to use in my laboratory a lot is a fluorescence so the fluorescence microscopy like on focal microscopy or fluorescence spectroscopy or say fluorescence correlation spectroscopy and so on so uh, fluorescence is a very handy technique now today uh, the fluorometer is not a very costly but it has a very high sensitivity okay and you can see very um, a strong intensity of fluorescence you can detect concentration up to nanomolar and if you are looking at uh, fluorescence correlation spectroscopy you can even go uh, much lower than that volume is required very low and uh, you can study single molecule level but a simple fluorometer cost uh, 10 to 12 lakhs and today you can do lot of things um, and is more or less maintenance free for a few years and uh, very simple to use 
but you can do wonder using fluorescence spectroscopy or fluorescence microscopy so application as uh, fluorescence spectroscopy application as biosensor determination of trace metal in the environment determination of ph in, uh, of um, in soils and cells clinical laboratory diagnostic tests many of the diagnostic tests today with the fluorescence um, even say pregnancy test or uh, some other hormonal test is uh, uh, fluorescence based and one can do very uh, small amount detect in biology fundamental physical processes in biology structure function relationship interaction with biomolecules such as protein nucleic acid structure and activity within the cells two main advantage high level of sensitivity and wide dynamic range single molecule detection instrument is convenient and very modest cost so if you look at the books a very easy to find the book jr lacuis even online available and uh, cantor and simel so there are different fluorophores are there say all the dna you can see in cells dna using dapi or hest fitc is used for many uh, uh, labeling of protein uh, labeling of antibody alexa gfp has changed entire biology and medical science the person who actually discovered gfp got nobel prize into, okay and so these fluorescence um, probes are um actually invented by the chemist and biologist together mostly the chemist and uh, he, along with the chemical biology this become the tools today and any textbook you open you see uh, most of the literature is generated visual literature uh, using the fluorescence microscopy and um, fluorescence spectroscopy so i do not want to get into details of Uh, too much but um, see fluorescence basis of fluorescence spectroscopy is this that each electronic state has as say you know um, uh, electronic energy vibrational energy and rotational energy so these are the vibrational state this is a ground electronic state these are the excited electronic state i will go very uh, quickly on this so Uh, the difference between two uh, energy difference between two electronic state is very high however the vibrational level difference is not too much and rotational level is very low for absorption spectroscopy we don't talk about the difference between the rotational level we only talk about the electronic level and vibrational level this is the difference with the vibrational level what happen when you give energy electron goes from ground electronic state to a different Uh, excited state or the first excited state or second excited state and each electron state has several vibrational level they lose the energy and ultimately there are many ways it can lose energy like you get as you get your monthly salary then your expenditure in many different ways what re- remain in the um, bank is your uh, you know net um, uh, deposit so uh, an efficiency is uh, the um, money in bank divided by the salary similarly how much energy you are giving and how much energy is getting lost but how much energy you is getting back by fluorescence so the am- an amount of energy you getting back as fluorescence divided by the total energy is called quantum yield so quantum yield is efficiency and very few cases quantum yield gets close to 1 actually 0.7 is a very high quantum yield like if we can save 20% of our salary is a very good if 50% that's wonderful but nobody gets that so similarly like that uh, you know um, tryptophan uh, which is biological fluorophore has quantum yield like 0.04 and so on so uh, but excited state this is the excited state and uh, and something called triplet state but triplet to singlet transitions are not allowed it's just like going to another country if you do not have a visa you cannot come back so uh, like that so the triplet to singlet transition is forbidden and this is called the phosphorescence but it happens ultimately if you go to another country and if you don't get a visa you will get deported but it will take long time and that is the phosphorescence so the, uh, and phosphorescence happen in solid state and that's why your hand watch glows in the evening 
or so on it's uh, or very uh, low temperature uh, fluorescence can happen in liquid state and often and so on i'm not going to discuss in details but you look at this this uh, the person who actually discovered uh, raja shin osima shimura and matin sape they got nobel prize in 2008 the gfp has a fluorescence yield of 0.79 high, uh, one of the highest quantum yield and this is a natural fluorophore they actually found uh, the question was how the jellyfish actually fluoresces ultimately they are, um, you know isolated this protein and now today in laboratory you can see the mice like this color this is one kind of cousin brother of gfp this is the gfp and uh, so it is beautiful fluorescence this is the serine tyrosine glycine together make the cr uh, chromophore if i have had time i would actually get through the chemistry i love this i used to teach this uh, so you get the um, uh, fluorophore and this fluorophore helps us to see things in cells in animals and so on and helps to discover drugs i do not want to get through the details uh, but it helps you to see the ring for example a bacteria divide using a machine called the z ring and this um, was not seen earlier but using the gfp you can see this ring which powered one bacterium to divide into two bacteria so uh, it changes the uh, situation i am uh, less part of my talk i will talk about um, cancer drugs so uh, this is microtubule targeting agents there are many cancer drugs or uh, microtubule targeted cancer drugs are known for example taxol texitior vinblastin ilirubin and these are if you look at this these uh, the, each of the drugs say for example taxol it targets microtubules but it gets used only for breast cancer lung cancer ovarian cancer uh, okay but it does not get used for the uh, brain tumor or it does not um, get used for the leukemia but if you look at vinblastin vinblastin used for lymphoma uh, leukemia melanoma brain cancer why if both of them are targeting microtubules why one kind of drugs is used for one kind of cancer we don't know the answer and also all of these drugs are highly toxic and they attack non cancerous cells as well as the cancerous cells but the cancerous cells are dividing um uh, cells so they um, get attached uh, attacked by the drugs much more than the non cancer drugs say estramustine is it is used only hormone receptor in prostate cancer okay i started my career on uh, understanding the mechanism of estramustine colchicine the first uh, tubulin targeted compound but it is not used for cancer treatment but it is used for the treatment of gout and uh, mediterranean fever okay so um, you know uh, this is the tubulin structures and when uh, the tubulin structure was known uh, almost 22 years ago people thought we will get a uh, dozens of anti cancer drugs but unfortunately in last 22 23 years we have not added any new drugs and the, all the drugs which are tubulin targeting agents that which i have shown you are all discovered by classical screening and they are used so taxol vinblastin all of this uh, but i want to tell you one thing how <coughs> you know new ideas can change things so this compound metensin you are looking at this this was discovered in 1970 Uh, 71 or 72 i have forgotten uh, but this compound has never been used because it, this is 1000 to 10000 fold more potent than taxol which is, is the third highest selling of all drugs in the world okay it, taxol has only market about 12 billion dollars uh, 10 to 12 billion dollars and its analog taxitior has another something like that so it's a huge market but metensin was never used and it is actually 1000 to 10000 times much more potent than taxol the reason it was not used because it is highly toxic uh, it works in picomolar and it works in uh, taxol works in nanomolar in any cell line in actually uh, 2005 or 6 maybe 6 uh, or so 
one comp uh, comp uh, company aside, they thought that they will conjugate metensin with the antibody and will deliver this. And they made a successful conjugate. And there, you know, I know because one of my former PhD student worked with a lot of biochemistry and cell biology with that antibody conjugate of metensin. And ultimately, the company used to put it in the market. Now it is now available as a approved anti-cancer drug, and it is getting sold in, for use in clinical um, clinical uses. So, but the success of the company actually came because they thought that idea they will deliver it only deliver it using antibody conjugate. So delivery made this non-usable compound as an usable compound, um, a drug, highly used drug. So this, um, so I, that's what I wanted to tell that India has a very good uh, chemistry and chemical engineering, and now very good biology and pharmacology. We can actually work together, make the unusable drugs uh, deliver in the proper place, and that can make a instead of uh, trying to get a lot of new drugs, this can actually help to find some new molecules, which are effective molecules. So, uh, you know, this is kind of work that we are doing. This is one of our work in the cover page of endocrine-related cancer. So we work on microtubules. Uh, in collaboration with Naipar Mahali, we actually found one molecule called combust um, it's an analog of combustorin A4, C12. It's much more potent than combustatin A4. Combustatin A4 is undergoing at least 20 to 30 different clinical trials, all kinds of tumors, and this compound is much more potent than combustatin A4. Uh, so um, and I just wanted to tell you, sometimes, you know, you do not need very high power instrument to do things. For example, if you want to look at, if you're looking for a tubulin targeted or microtubule targeted anti-cancer drugs, you can easily look at these under, uh, you know, fluorescence microscope. If you put the um, uh, drug in cells, it actually, a group of compounds depolymerize microtubules and a group of compound increase microtubule polymerization. You can look at this. Uh, all methods are described in these methods in molecular biology publication of ours. And you can, but interestingly, microtubules are very a, uh, interesting polymers. If you put the cells on ice, they depolymerize. And then you put the cells back in carbon dioxide incubator, the microtubule polymerize again. For, um, uh, for example, uh, if you add drugs, they also depolymerize. You wash the drug out, they polymerize. Okay, so you, you can look at this very easily. So we look at different kinds of drug treatment in cells. I'm not going to show in details, but you can use a microscope to look at different structures and so on. Okay, now what I'm showing you, this is a very fancy thing. Uh, in a sense, it requires confocal microscopy and very elaborate setup. Here you are looking at the end of the microtubules, okay, and looking for dynamics at the end of the microtubule. Microtubules are 24 nanometer diameter polymer and 24 nanometer diameter polymers. And in looking at their growth and shortening inside the cells, you can monitor it in India today. Okay, so we have the capability to look at such a fine, um, uh, you know, uh, kinetics uh, and uh, doing the cell biology uh, in that way. Okay, so um, anyway, oh, what happened? So another thing that you can look at this, um, uh, that looking at the um, uh, growing and uh, you know movement of uh, and um, other protein along the length of the microtubule. Some way videos are not playing, uh, so uh, something happened uh, that uh, videos are not playing now. And uh, so this is also spindle microtubule dynamics. Can you hear me now? So uh, there are a lot of interesting uh, thing that you can do today. Yes, you okay. can. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. I think I. 
Yes, sir, you are audible. Uh, okay. So there are other techniques you can use. For example, the fret. Donna, uh, you know, a lot of you have heard about the fret, and fret is as easy uh, to do as um, any other uh, thing. And today, even plate reader, you can do it. Or uh, the in uh, if you have uh, pure protein, but if you want to do in cells, you need confocal, and you because you need to have ability to bleach the uh, either the donor or the acceptor. The way it happens. The donor fluorescence, acceptor absorbance, they must overlap. Donor fluorescence, there is a di because of the dipole dipole interaction, and uh, there, there is a quenching of donor fluorescence. And if the acceptor is fluorescent, they, it increases its fluorescence. And if acceptor is not fluorescent, then uh, the donor uh, fluorescence decreases. Now, in cells, you need, uh, you know, if you want to do uh, fret in cells, you need actually confocal. But if you want to do intestine, you don't need that. You can have mm, in a fluorometer or plate reader, you can do this in pure protein level or protein DNA, protein drug, and so on. So FRET is a very highly uh, interesting technique and very sensitive technique because it changes with a inverse of sixth power of this. So uh, very sensitive te uh, technique, a little change in distance between the donor and acceptor, there is a huge change in en energy transfer. So people can look at this in many different ways. Uh, for example, protein folding studies, co-localization studies, develop a biochemical sensor, nucleic acid hybridization studies, and so on. I will just show you um, one or two uh, example of this. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, one particular compound binding, this is the protein in cells, say it will bind in one place and then this will close and then you have an energy transfer and if it does not bind there, then it's open structure, there is no energy transfer. So it will develop the color based on the energy transfer. So there are a lot of uses people, you know, uh, tyrosinase and detyrosinase and post transition and modification and so on. See, for example, hybridization. See, you want to determine, uh, see, CFOS mRNA. This is a, uh, for detection of cancer. Uh, people use this. So, how much this particular mRNA is there? Uh, and uh, like today, a lot of, um, uh, you know, um, uh, technique, uh, in situ hybridization technique is used uh, in order to uh, find out the um, particular mRNA present or DNA present. So you look at this, you design one probe like this, another probe like this. And it will actually, the molecular biology allows you to only hybridize this way. So they will come closer and there will be energy transfer. And if, uh, so the, uh, depending on the energy transfer, you can back calculate how much the uh, mRNA is present, so you can actually detect the either it is cancer or in some cases even today TB is detected by uh, doing this kind of thing. Okay, so uh, particular um, uh, DNA you can actually very easily detect. Mycobacteria, uh, you know, tuberculosis DNA you can easily detect by that way. So uh, there are a lot of um, interesting things you can do. I am uh, not, you know, I don't think at this moment, there are much scope of um, talking all this. But generally, if you take a large amount of compounds today, you can actually detect very easily um, using different targets. What we have proposed uh, to um, government that we needed to have funds and that uh, uh, will allow us to grow from, uh, you know, uh, TRL2 to TRL3 or TRL3 to TRL4, dedicated funds where you know the targets, then you can do research. I think CSIR is also doing it, Department of Pharmaceuticals also focusing on tremendously how to actually take drugs from you know, TRL2 or TRL3 to higher, you know, a lot of uh, focus is going on. So hopefully uh, the younger generation will take uh, the steps to actually take things from 
uh, you know, one level to another level. And this requires the vision. I just uh, will end with one very simple story. When I was in California, uh, University of California, Santa Barbara, one person who was working along with me, say, uh, both of us were post up. He said, I want to level tubulin and sell into the market. And I, in, incidentally, I published leveling of chlorescent leveling of tubulin during my PhD. Very few people in the world that time knew how to level tubulin. And, but I think even fewer people thought that it can be a business. But he thought that because in order to level tubulin, you need infrastructure of $500,000 or $600,000 minimum. Uh, but uh, you need uh, level tubulin is worth of five hundred uh, or six hundred dollars per year. So m many companies will actually purchase this rather than investing in a half a, uh, a million dollar on that. And he was successful. Now that's company cytoskeleton. Many um, uh, companies in this country also buy reagent from them. And all the research institute buy reagent from them. And they actually level uh, only different proteins or DNA and cell um, this. And they have a huge market to do. So understanding the market and taking um, this a particular vision and going forward is the key. In, uh, I think today's young generation probably will be able to do this. And um, I hope some of the students, instead of being a job seeker all the time, they take this hard work to make a job giver. And uh, generation of economy is very important. And there are a lot of scopes today, Atma Nirwar Bharata. There are a lot of um, here and there, um, you know, incubators are coming. A um, lot of supports are available today. So, I, um, you know, I hope some of the uh, students and professors take this. Um, uh, earlier, there was very difficult to even start a company from an academic institute. Now it is becoming much easier. New education policy, or uh, if you look at the uh, incubation center in different ways, it's much easier. And I can take some questions uh, um, about science. I hope the scientific questions are coming. I will be very happy to take some questions if you have. Thank you so much for inviting me. And if some other time, if you want me, I can give more, uh, you know, uh, subject-oriented talk, either in biology or, or pharmacology or something on that. Okay. <coughs> Thank you so much, sir. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your valuable information uh, with respect to fluorescence techniques, targeted binding sites, and effects of drugs and microtubules. I hope all the participants got a lot of information and insp inspiration from you, sir. Now I request our panelists, Professor Dr. V.K. Kapoor, sir, and Professor Dr. T. Uh, T. R. Bhardwaj, sir. Uh, Professor Panda, thank you very much for delivering such an illustrious lecture, excellent lecture, which was very inspiring for the young mind. And uh, starting from the process, how, how complicated process is there to discover a single drug. And I 100% agree with you that there is a involvement not only of chemists, biologists, clinicians, and pharmacology. So you have rightly pointed out that this is a time when there has to be integration and research needs an industry academy in the interaction and it is well taken and we in Bhatti University have the advantage of having a hub of industries in, uh, and have much chances to interact with them. And uh, your <clears throat> talk on uh, microtubule acting drugs are natural products which act on the microtubule for their anti-cancer activity. And it was astonishing to 
know them my tensin is 1000 times active than uh, taxol but uh, it has due to its toxicity it has not been put to use is are there any efforts going on to modify the molecule in some way so that the activity remains and toxicity goes as the taxol molecule has been modified to give taxotier and other derivatives like we i mean is are the attempts going on to modify metaxin yes actually now metaxin is used because of the antibody conjugated now they are able to deliver it uh, so uh, i think uh, last 4 years metaxin is in the market as an antibody conjugate okay okay uh, but a uh, lot of derivatives of metaxin are also coming however they are you know still toxic uh, see toxicity it is very difficult to know why is it toxic and why is not something is not toxic you see taxol and taxicure there is a change of uh, one hydrogen to one hydroxyl group it increases the solubility only and it has increased the solubility and in some cases um, you know on toxicity reduced because of a small amount of drug actually getting used taxicure also has a big market there are a lot of taxol derivatives have been as you as a chemist you know all over the world chemists are actually making taxol derivatives but on, on and several of the taxol derivative came but again um, the toxicity is an issue but metaxin lot of people are working uh, metaxin but this success of metaxin is very good that antibody conjugate yeah. uh, now um, um, in in india people can look at more different formulation or other kind of conjugate look at this of course derivatives sir but uh, since metaxin is a very complex molecule uh, it's not very easy chemistry also mm-hmm. yeah Uh, Dr. Panda, this is the age of molecular biology and chemical yes. biology, actually, yes. and it is envisaged that in future, 40% of the highly saleable drugs will be proteinous in nature. Yes. Biologics. So yes. So naturally, for the delivery, uh, for their delivery, because of their i mean proteinous nature they cannot be given by oral route mm-hmm. and new delivery system have to be i found out and yes. that opens a vast plethora of research activities yeah so india must concentrate on those also because generics took us to a certain level and in order to maintain that level Uh, the biologics biosimilars um in all kind of this thing we needed to see this otherwise it will be uh, very difficult to maintain the tag of pharmacy of the world yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and was very interesting to know that how fluorescent spectroscopy can be used in agriculture in medicine and has a lot of applications and uh, she diagnosis it is a lot of diagnosis it, it, it is probably one of the best diagnostic tool that's why you can see a very small amount of sample can be seen yeah. and, uh, and I, it will have much more advantage as a diagnostic tool so many either the glucose detection to the any and forensic science also it has a very uh, many many applications in india um, biologist earlier they did not know uh, uh, fluorescence uh, chemist do not interacted this but today uh, fortunately chemistry also reading biology and biologist also are coming from chemistry so yeah. it is possible to develop you know um, this kind of tool much more in india today because the uh, there are a lot of uh, biologists no chemistry today and many chemists are highly versed in biology today 
so it is uh, possible to develop something today it is very interesting to know that uh, nano molecular quantities can be i have been detected by fluorescence yes not only yes and it has a lot of future as a diagnostic tool and as see yeah if you look at this thing um, fcs fluorescence correlation spectroscopy they look at in nanomolar okay but the volume is also in uh, you know femtoliter so um, or even you say one um, you know very small volume that if you look at this and then you have a nanomolar concentration and if you have it just even one microliter so that your concentration is going on this sometimes you can look at in fluorescent uh, coercion spectroscopy with two three molecule yeah okay so you can look at single molecule level because femtoliter is the volume and your concentration is nano so it's basically coming into um, close to above our number you know very very um, one two molecules are there only some cases and they um, give a different kind of fluorescence uh, uh, signal uh, and it took several years to understand it but now the programs are there and it is very easy to get correlation time and from correlation time you can do all kind of binding and, um, and so on some okay. other day i can actually teach you yeah, should sure, sure. it's a different yeah. subject sure. all together yeah. <laughs> we would like to listen more about this technology from you it has been real pleasure uh, dr pada hearing from you and it was a very inspiring lecture and it, it is a thought provoking lecture for the young mind and we are, we look forward to more interactions with niper and with the university thank you so much sir professor thank you. Oh, thank you thank you thank you thank you yes sir bardwaj yeah. so um i think your mic is you are not audible sir uh, sir you are not audible yeah Uh, yeah now you are uh, yeah still now not now your mic is muted yeah yes so i am bhardwaj here again <laughs> so it was uh, muted so first of all again i would i have to thank you on behalf of badin watch in particular for your enlightened lectures which will be not only beneficial to the youngsters but we have also gained lot of it uh, as far as uh, this the, the, the duct remain the same miss uh, metatensin which is again highly uh, active comparatively but what kind of uh, toxicities are observed uh, from this See, molecule uh, uh, new, uh, these compounds Uh, most of the tubulin targeting compounds ha have problem with the neurotoxicity mm. bone marrow suppression so if you look at even in taxol okay the first thing yeah, you look yeah. at these people are uh, losing hair and then there is a bone marrow uh, suppression metens mm. in particularly uh, the neurotoxicity bone marrow suppression all um, because it targets that all the dividing cells and uh, you know um and there are a lot of um, uh, problems uh, that you uh, see in this uh, and uh, today we know a bit here and there why are the toxicity there um but um, this is very little one can do uh, to reduce the toxicity you know and and uh, only way one can reduce it by either changing the delivery option so that you deliver only the place where it's supposed yeah, to go that's what i was thinking uh, that yes yeah, that could be one approach you see either it convert into the uh, two molecules uh, combined together conjugates you can say yes so the other part can be taken care of or yes. we can go for the polymeric linked or polymer linked yes. type of yes. conjugates so we can and, think of those and another method sometimes is just to Say uh, you uh, you give in combination with other drugs, 
and that reduces the toxicity sometimes because uh, the dose of independent um, both the drugs get reduced so you get if you get the synergistic activity then there is a reduction of say one is bone marrow suppression another is the neurotoxicity yeah. so some level of neurotoxicity you can tolerate some level of bone marrow suppression you can tolerate patient can survive but if any one of these become too much the patient don't survive so that is uh, you know these are the but deliver increasing delivery or increasing solubility um, you know we just published a, a paper in uh, acs chemical neuroscience showing that you know if you uh, look at tubulin targeting drug particularly colchicine side drugs beta tube beta 3 tubulin Uh, is a problem, but how do, you can't do anything with, with beta three tubulin because it is um, there. So there's nothing you can do about it. You know, so um, that, uh, avoiding toxicity is a real, uh, you know, billion dollar or trillion yes, dollar. Yeah, question. better compound, better than taxol. You see, yes. that's one part. Yes. So it's a trillion dollar is question. How available in the, the market? Toxicity? Is the drug is available in the market or? Uh, The metensin is available in the market. Costly, very costly, or? Ah, uh, metensin is costly. It is very costly. Um, the powder is costly, uh, but um, uh, one can. I exactly don't remember. We did some work earlier, uh, but it is a costly compound. But it, one, it, it is getting from some fungus, but one can synthesize also. I think uh, uh, it is. Macro molecule. Macro so this molecule. makes it difficult. Yeah, but people can synthesize also now. The yeah. good chemistry is available. People can yeah. add part by part. Synthetic chemistry. Yes. And second, pertaining to the spectrophotometry, I think the the tool which is there or the the instrument that will also help in uh, knowing about the targeting of the drugs also. See, yes, you must require not only the drug distribution. Without going for the killing of the animals or looking at their afterwards, how much has gone to the liver or how much has gone to the other part of the body, we can uh, do quantitative. Yes. quantitative. Yes. And today uh, the plate see. readers, I see. Which, uh, plate there is very sensitive plate readers are available which are 96 point, and one can actually look at 96 sample at a time. I see. And it's not very costly. See, twenty lakhs are not twenty twenty five lakhs are not too much costly today's market, and one can go at different temperature, very small volume, hundred fifty microliter, hundred microliter volume each than this, and so, uh, you know it can be high throughput because how many compounds generally even small scale industry have thousand. 2000 if you can do 100 compound at a time even 2000 compound does not take many days okay and, and, and so it is possible to screen large uh, library also but if someone has 30000 compounds then it is difficult but how many companies in india will have 30000 compounds no, no, not, not even among <laughs> and academia will never have that many compounds yeah. so you know 100 compounds yeah, you can yeah. screen that very easily And you can do all kind of quantitative studies. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to the, you know, if you look at university, one of the thing that we, students need to do equilibrium assays, mm -hmm. uh, and one has to do all kind of binding studies, competitive binding, this that, so that they generate enough data for their thesis or their publications. And because you can go very low concentration, you can do quantitative equilibrium studies. It does not require separation. Mm -hmm. See, if you are looking at uh, one drug binding to a protein using radioactivity, first thing you need a separation. Without separating, you will not know. Or, but here it is. A, it, uh, it does not require any separation. It's an equilibrium study. It's a change in fluorescence. You can get this. So it it is much easier to deal with um, uh, this. So um, I think um, I wrote two method chapter. Though it is looking at this mm -hmm. um, tubulin system, but it can be adapted for any other system. 
uh, and all kind of binding and fluorescence um, things have been discussed on this, the two uh, two chapters on uh, methods in, um, you know, molecular biology methods. So it's uh, based on fluorescence spectroscopy and microscopy. So it's not only can be used for tubulin, though it is tubulin was taken as a modern system, but any other protein. Because protein name change, physical technique does not change. Uh, just, uh, you know, based on, instead of tubulin, you can take actin or you can take a kinase or you can uh, process remains same. In, in case of specifically cancerous uh, diseases, maybe cancer of brain or colon or maybe kidney or all kind of things, if the, the approach which is being used or the one alternative, it is free from or lesser side toxicity, uh, lesser these things. So in that case, uh, targeted drug delivery is very, very successful compared to And yeah, to, see, to confirm that is being... One can do, you see, in our lab also, when I was in IIT Bombay, we did one um, anti, uh, you know, um, uh, conjugated uh, EGFR targeting agent. I just want to tell you, we had a um, uh, very good animal data uh, mm -hmm. published in the top uh, rated journals, in vitro data, animal data. And uh, we had American patent, Indian patent, but we could not go much that time because, uh, you know, in, in academic lab, say you get stopped at TRL2, TRL3 level. Beyond TRL3, you never, it is very difficult to have economy to go in a cost increase uh, several folds, you know, 100 times more than your lab budget. So that's what uh, the director uh, Sniper or when I, you know, we all trying to say this that you now we needed industry collaboration who will take from TRL three to that's why more in, academic and industry collaboration are required. But the academic place will stop; they will take this, and or the government fund it so that it can go from TRL three to TRL four to TRL5 and so on. And very clear idea which TRL stage it is, is required. And people needed to be highly honest and this, okay, if this compound is not working, leave it. But a, a strong evalu critical evaluation required and then industry, see industry most of the time says your evaluation is not correct because it is hot, you know. Uh, reproducibility and all these things because they want to put a lot of money. So you, they need a very critical, uh, you know, reproducible data from academia. Okay, so uh, and uh, that process has to be rigorous. Then they can put this. So all these things, are, but fortunately, you know, it is coming. I think in um, we'll see there are a lot of people who will be interested um, and uh, because the policies are now uh, more favorable for the development. More favorable for the development. It, it goes in stages. It, 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 you know, everything goes in stages. I think the stage we are now, in few years, you will see a lot of development. Uh, in fact, in, uh, in case of uh, farm industry of India, they have uh, least uh, faith in the institutions, researches, specifically universities. Although they may have some in the national labs, but, uh, you know, but uh, I think the uh, um, thing will change because they see one of the thing, and that is in last few years, what happened in Indian science in general is producing very good quality research papers. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this quality is getting admired by all over the world. And the quality is good. Last few years, Indian science has progressed, particularly the two areas that I am familiar with, uh, you know, chemistry and biology, uh, because I am a biologist, but my initial days was trained as a chemist, so chemistry and biology, last 30 years I'm doing only biology, but then I, 
what I, I have seen last 10 15 years and particularly you know indian science has progressed a lot all over the country people are doing good science and high quality science and i know very um, inspiring science all over india okay so they, this will slowly and steadily change the thing even small universities are producing good papers and quality papers okay so um, uh, so that is what uh, you know is coming all over the country last 10 15 years it is going on now it is taking even higher heights and uh, it will it will go in a good shape in, you know we will see it that you know our yes, generation only so see it that it, it, it is making good progress we very very good progress because yeah, of the that is going on we see India when also, i joined in iit bombay in 2000 even in mumbai if we are looking for a fax machine fluorescence activated cell sorter there was one machine in cri that time cri was cancer research institute mm -hmm. it was part of the tata uh, tata memorial center that time today if you look at this the same fax machine which costs 2.5 crore, you know, to 3 to 4, 400 lakhs or 500 lakhs or even 2.5 to 500 range depending on the machine quality. In Mumbai, you will see hundreds fax machine. I see. Okay. And many hospitals have it. All the research institutes have two, three, four machines and so many. Okay. So this is one, I gave an example of one costly equipment. Similarly, if you look at this mass spectrophotometer or a proteomics machine, there was only one machine for Maldives was in IIT Bombay in our group. Mm -hmm. Now, there are many machines, much better machines all over the Mumbai and at least 20 machines are there in different places. So similarly, the availability of equipment throughout India not Mumbai. I said Mumbai, Bangalore because I know of, but all over the places, even in Naipur Mohali, I think I want people to take advantage of that. Even this year, we have uh, put uh, almost 20 crore for new equipments. And these are very high power equipments, uh, very difficult to think of 10 years ago because so many costly, uh, you cannot name a machine that we don't have. Very difficult. I don't think that we have everything. In fact, but, uh, in, fact yeah, I have been, uh, in fact, I have been telling that this is one of the area you see that the sophisticated analytical instruments we are not preparing of good quality, exportable. We are importing since I think uh, the, even so I, I, I request quality. your university yeah. uh, faculty yeah. and others to take uh, if anything you require, take advantage of the facility what is available with a very small charge it is available very small amount of charge that is available and in you know, some cases we may even if someone does not have money we can even think of you know get in there. but with a very small charge it is available so yeah. taking advantage of the already available infrastructure would be a good thing to do instead of just getting another five crore instrument or say you need a 500 megahertz um, NMR, it is already there. You need a high high power, uh, you know, uh, multi-top um, MSMS machine, it is already there. You need a confocal, it is already there. So for two days of work, you don't need to buy it. You simply come, pay nominal charge, use it. And it takes a yes. lot of advantage, you know, a lot of expertise to not uh, buying is simple thing, but running it is not easy. That's also maintenance is of course. Yes. Yes. Because thank you very much for your all uh, discussions and uh, new ideas and the solutions with respect to the Indian research and the area of thrust area specifically pertaining to the cancer, anti-cancer drugs approaches also. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank, so you. Nice. thank you. And over to Dr. Martendu.
ठीक है थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू प्रोफेसर टी आर भारद्वाज सर एंड थैंक यू प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर वी के कपूर सर थैंक यू डॉक्टर पांडा सर एनी क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द पार्टिसिपेंट्स क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम द पार्टिसिपेंट्स डॉक्टर पांडा आई हैव अ क्वेश्चन आई एम सुषमा फ्रॉम बद्दी uh if you see the market uh mm -hmm. number of new drugs keep coming but they don't stay long it's just for few months maybe a year they stay and then again a new moiety comes so where actually is the problem why the market is not stable like if you see the antibiotics the uh, initial penicillin amoxicillin ampicillin these are still there but the new ones which are coming they keep on changing keep on changing i don't know the, what the, is the reason the minor modification of those and the, um, i think they are just trade name is different and there is if you have a novel molecule and it is Uh, if you have a molecule which works it will work okay so today the price is very little is in the beginning i said this that you know this is an idea a lot of time people get uh, thinking that okay i needed to have an affordable something if you discover something it will be affordable because um price is actually much more in the phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 lawyer profit margin and so on and if if we discover something our price will be affordable anyway and if you start from the beginning that i needed to have an affordable one most likely this will not be usable so we need a um, fundamentally new molecule novelty must be there originality must be there and it should be efficacious forget the cost if cost will be minimal if you discover it anything in the other system will be cheaper marketing strategies that little yes. change in the name uh, high pricing but again uh, what is really effective are the basic uh, molecules only see you we know how marketing gets done we should not talk about this but anything is effective it will have a market today if something is effective it will have a market and this, that's why we should actually focus on the efficacy and originality of this if it is original if it is effective it will have a market uh, and i am pretty much sure if an indian scientist indian company discovery cost will be less so they don't need it to nobody needs to look at the affordability in the beginning because affordability in the beginning means corner cutting all the way and nothing is going, see a lot of things came out that had to take out from the market because if the cost is only parameter someone has a steady product in the market they will reduce the cost for two months and your product will be out of business in two three months so you you need uh, some originality in there see a lot of people in india started making glucose detection system but there is no originality nothing will survive other yeah. thing, you know, need an advantage and originality and then cost will come down anyway so today you look at all this penicillin amoxicillin all anything what is the cost nothing but in us you cannot uh, buy this because still they have the higher cost that they protected so i think it is our time to think about novelty originality efficacy cost will reduce by anyway because you don't need to have huge margin of profit to 200% 300% to make a profit margin 20% your cost will reduce anyway thank you you know? thank you thanks thank you dr shushma sharma ma'am for this question any other participant you can please ask questions from sir any other participants 
थैंक यू सो मच नाउ आई इनवाइट प्रोफेसर डॉक्टर रवनीश मिश्रा सर इन स्कूल ऑफ फार्मेसी एंड एमर्जिंग साइंसेस बद्दी यूनिवर्सिटी टू प्रपोज अ वोट ऑफ थैंक्स प्रोफेसर मिश्रा सर any participant wants to ask question you can ask questions please I can't hear anything. So, is there anything no, else I need to do? Yeah, yes, sir. Sir, uh, sir is coming in a minute. Uh, okay, Professor. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. He's like there. Uh, Doctor Bhartindu, it's audible to you right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's yeah. audible, sir. Okay, okay. Let me start. Okay. Dear participants, we were the first in India to start international online conference. in 2020 2022 during covid 19 pandemic series we continued in 2020 2021 and this year in 2020 2022 that is drug discovery development and lead optimization my dear participants thank you for being with us and making this international online conference successful i want to express my gratitude to our chief guest professor dr dulal panda sir to accept our invitation and enlighten all of us i would like to thank professor dr panda for extending of support to school of pharmacy and emerging sciences with respect to research and improvement in the academics i express my heartfelt thanks to guest of honor professor dr j k sharma of vice chancellor of baddi university of emerging science and technology for being with us throughout the conference i express my sincere thanks to honorable secretary of university mr gauram junjunwala ji for constant support i would like to thank our conference advisor dr v k kapoor dr tejveer singh both are our senior professor emeritus at school of pharmacy and emerging sciences i would like to thank our chair person and advisor to chancellor professor dr t r bhardwaj sir we have received more than 1000 registrations more than 200 presentations for oral and poster so i want to acknowledge all the participants to believe in us I acknowledge the contribution imparted by our renowned international and national speakers who spared some moments 
for all of us with their knowledge sharing lessons last but not the least i pay my special thanks to my team bust family sps family with their efforts only i am successfully concluding this international online conference thank you all and bye bye we'll meet you with another enthusiastic session soon thank you thank you sir thank you. bye thank you sir thank you thank you so much sir thank you dr bharwaj hello <laughs> Hello. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Great job done by teaching with my college. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, my senior professor, Dr. T. R. Bhardwaj sir, V. K. Kapoor sir, and Dr. Tejveer Singh sir, and my team. Yes. You must congratulate Dr. Avnish. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations. The head which wins the crown. <laughs> Great job, Dad. Great job. Thank you. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.